Ten decisions shape your life Be aware of fire about Seven ways to go through school Sit me down, da, 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 da. shut me up, oh, calm down, I'll get along with you. We are in Slurp Ramen Joint, uh, Ramen Joint we opened two years ago now. Let's go inside. All right. I'll give you a quick tour around and explain you what we do here. As you can see, it's a pretty small restaurant. We got 22 seats. We try to keep it small, keep the bus up, keep the energy. Think of a pizza. Pizza, the door, the base is everything. It doesn't matter. The rest is just you carry it on top, but the door is everything. Same here. You gotta make sure you're gonna have some great noodles. Oh, there you are. Okay. You have to, I think you should turn around because this, because the sun light is going to be better on your face as opposed to behind you. In the video, um, I just showed Slurp. You guys closed right now? What's happening? Um, yeah, so right now we just have been closed for a month exactly. What does that mean for all the employees, for you, for the restaurant? When that whole thing started, like in the very beginning, it was clear for us, what can we do to keep all our staff on payroll for as long as possible. So we started out by sending them on vacation for two weeks just to give ourselves some time and to get some more certainty uh, and clarity from the government. We're gonna keep the restaurant closed for another month and a half. And it is a period of about three months that is covered by the state. So they're covering 90% of the salaries. So you guys, the restaurant gets a check from the government and then you distribute that to your employees via payroll. Right, exactly. You think people aren't going to go back to restaurants in the same volume as before? It's always hard to see, right to predict, but I would say no tourists, right? Like we have no tourists. Yeah. There's no ships coming into the harbor. Like you've seen them last year, right? Like all these huge um, cruise liners. I mean, yeah. they bring like thousands upon thousands of people every day. And now there's none. Can you really quickly explain the economics of a restaurant? How much money comes in versus how much you're spending? Do restaurants make a lot of um, income every month and are there savings or no? How does that work? Let's say that your overall operation margin is probably somewhere below 10% on a really good day. But I would say it's somewhere between 2 to 5% roughly. This is what we then hopefully make at the end of the day that goes up and down with different seasons. It's, it's never constant. So you operate on a very, very slim margin. I mean, once again, we're very fortunate here in Denmark with the support from the government that we're getting, that we can push through this much longer. But I'm sure there's um, a lot of other countries, and you probably know it best right from the US, where, yeah, you don't have that same safety net. And People are working for, for a minimum wage. And I think these are the things where we just can't go back to normal. So now back to it, like front end, yes, I hope guests will go out again. Sooner than later, they will go to restaurants again. But from the back end, when it comes to the infrastructure of restaurants, the way we set them up and the way we look after workers, something needs to change there. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Peace, Doc. Thanks Stay for having day. me. Love you, brother. Yeah, well, this is where I had one of my first jobs the summer after high school. Rosa Mexicano, Mexican restaurant on 18th Street. I worked there for two summers. It's a great gig. They're closed, not due to COVID-19. They're closed because there was a fire in the building next door. But they would probably be closed right now if they were open. Does that make sense?
You know the term comfort food? I found this definition for comfort food in an article from 1966. Adults when under severe emotional stress turn to what could be called comfort food. Food associated with the security of childhood. Right now we're spending time apart and restaurants are closed. The obvious connection between the two being restaurants are a place that we so often get together with other people. Maybe that's what makes restaurants so important is that they're a place where we connect with each other. And maybe it's the connecting part of restaurants that gets taken for granted. You know who uh, Jose Andres is? He started this organization called World Central Kitchen. Chef Jose Andres is turning several of his DC and New York City restaurants into community kitchens where he's offering takeout service at affordable prices and meals for free for those who need them. What's really cool about what World Central Kitchen is doing now is they're putting restaurants back to work. They're having functioning restaurants that otherwise would be empty. They're having them make meals for people who are in need. You can read more about World Central Kitchen below and donate if you want. I think what they're doing is super cool and helpful both to people who are on the front lines fighting this, people who are struggling to eat, and obviously restaurants that are struggling to stay open when they can't serve people. I made this video because restaurants are important to me and they're obviously struggling right now. We don't know when they're gonna start to reopen or how different they'll be when they do. But I do know that people who work in restaurants are some of the hardest working people around and they're anxious to get their doors back open and get back to serving food and back to being a place where we meet and we make memories and we spend time with our loved ones. So, that's episode one of Comfort Food. Episode two is coming out next week. It's about baking. I'm gonna leave you with Philip giving some advice on cooking at home. If you're interested in cooking at home, listen to what he has to say. Till next time. Do you have any advice for people out there who wanna cook at home? Now is a great time of really just like reconnecting again with your own kitchen by just trying things out not so much of like you know being very specific about recipes but we always have one or the other ingredient around just being playful and you know you got the time so play around just get again this um this sense for that you trust your instincts and you also trust your skills just to kind of get it going again but then once you did also you know do take uh, a bigger project like baking bread or making uh, a lasagna from scratch like meaning making your own pasta sheets as well and all these kind of things do that as well so you stand in the kitchen for a couple of hours it can be very um, uh, what do you say like very relaxing and you know soothing of being able to get the different smells and aromas and um, all these different things going yeah.